Hi, this is Craig Tomler from Startup Stories, and I'm here with Matt Fenwick of True North Writing to talk about his startup journey. So, uh, Matt, um, you've had quite an interesting journey, I think. Um, so, tell us about how you got started um, in your business. Yeah, sure. So, my first career was as a lawyer. So, being really um, interested in words and enjoying writing, my options were. Uh, English teacher, this is coming out of high school, English teacher, um, lawyer, minister of religion or writer um, and at that point uh, the only one that looked even vaguely doable as a career for me was lawyer so I did that for a few years and um, got quite interested in how you express a message clearly in a way that people can make sense of and um, I was working in government and I began to realise that this um, need to translate information into a way that people can understand, it's not just government that has to do this, it's um, a lot of businesses struggle with this as well. And I found that um, a lot of the clients that I picked up were people who were very, very good at a particular thing, IT professionals or financial planners, but they struggled to actually express that through the written word. Uh, so, um, I kind of fell into it fairly, fairly accidentally, I, I would say. You know, I was doing all this stuff on the side while I was still in my nice, secure, comfortable government job. Uh, and then I was in a uh, job in the public service that was less than ideal. And I, um, it made me question my competence, value. And out of that, I began to go, well, how is government the only option for me, uh, what would it look like if I was to actually take this interest in writing and and maybe make a business out of it. Hmm. Right, and after that you actually uh, left the public service, went out on your own, so that must have been a pretty scary step. Uh, it was a very long scary step. So I write about this in um, my book Life Without Lanyards, which is a bit of a sort of a manual for people who are maybe in the public service or a large bureaucratic organisation thinking about uh, leaving to start their own business. And what I did was a fairly um, strategically phased withdrawal, which makes it sound like a military campaign <laughs> or something. But basically the, the, the narrative that we sold about entrepreneurship is that it's a matter of standing up one day and walking out and never coming back. And it's a fairly um, it's a fairly simplistic narrative. And it's also one that me personally, I just wouldn't have had the, the nerve to do. Um, what I did instead was did them both in parallel for a while. So there were a couple of years there where I was working mornings and evenings and weekends uh, to, to build up my business and also to allow myself time to, to make some mistakes. You know, to lose a client or two and for it not to be the end of the world because I still had this, mm. steady, um, this steady job going. And then uh, there came a point where um, I, I reached a, a stage where I needed to make a decision. Am I going to stay or, or go, leave the public service um, or, or stay in there? And um, there were a couple of personal factors going on like family stuff and wanting to study. but. Um, that was the point at which I decided I'm going to uh, step out and see how I go. Even then I didn't actually resign from my job. I took leave without pay for six months and about three months in I went, yep, I'm liking this, I'm going to make a, make a go of it and then I, then I quit. No, great. Well, that, that gives you a lot of um, fallbacks if something doesn't work out. Yeah. yeah. So what were some of the challenges you sort of encountered when you actually did take a leap and start stepping out? Well, it's a challenge that um, I think most small business owners face. There's the thing that they do that they're good at and then there's running a business. And I knew from the start that I wanted to run a writing business. And that may sound a bit, bit obvious, but in the writing and creative trade, there's freelancers. Mm -hmm. And those are basically guns for hire. And so they are called in by someone else who wins the work and then just draws, draws them in as needed. 
And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as a career path. I know a lot of people who follow that and, uh, and make pretty decent money and do quite well out of it. But for me, I wanted more control. Um, and so that meant going out and winning, winning my own clients. Uh, and so that meant taking the running a business part seriously. And to be honest, that's still something, it's, it's a work in progress. You know, I'm, I'm getting my project management systems a lot more um, organized than what I used to. And um, I think, um, particularly if you're in some kind of creative field, there's this tendency to want to just lose yourself in the work. Yes. Uh, and it's also very attractive if you're any kind of entrepreneur um, to buy into this myth that you need to be working 50, 60 hours a week. Um, and again, I know some people who do that and more, and they can pull it off. For me, just the way I'm wired, I, if I work eight, eight and a half, nine hour days, that's about as much you know, juice as there, in me, as there is in me. Um, so what that means for me is that I have to um, allow myself time both for doing the actual work that I get paid for and also um, getting all the all of the other stuff that you need to um, keep your business afloat, staying on top of the cash flow, doing marketing, all of that stuff. Hmm. Okay, so, so Matt, what other challenges have you uh, faced uh, and what lessons have you learned along the way? Uh, uh, big one for me, and this may sound funny given that I do marketing content for a living, but it was actually around um, promoting my business and marketing my business and part of that includes knowing uh, when to take no for an answer. So um, really early on, I um, found someone who I thought would absolutely jump at the chance to work with me. It was uh, the people who did the gunners on a house. I looked at their website and I thought it was terrible. So I thought, well, if it's obvious to me that they need my help, then I just need to sort of turn up and they'll, they'll say, oh, where have you been? We've been expecting you. So anyway, I called up the managing director um, and she agreed to meet with me. And this was when I was so still working in government and I was flying up to Sydney for, for a meeting. Our flight got delayed. So I caught a taxi from the airport out to Western Sydney, which um, cost me about 150 bucks. And when I got to their office, she didn't show up. So at that point, um, me today would have gone, you know, maybe this is a bad sign, but I kept chasing her for, I'm going to say about six months after that, just politely, you know, going, hey, wondering if you'd like to catch up. And um, that was driven partly by, um, not, not that I was desperate to win the work, but this sense that, um, you know, if they said no, then that would be a really, really bad thing. Not kind of accepting that you're not going to win every every proposal. So the big lesson for me there was um, getting some antenna for whether or not a client is actually ready to engage you. And that's one of the things that I think you can certainly have some processes and you know, some criteria up front, but a lot of it's just going out in the ring, um, getting some bruises and, and and learning that way. And I'm, I'm definitely a lot smarter about that kind of stuff than I was, um, which is probably both the frustrating thing and the good thing about working for yourself in that you can look back on where you were 12 months ago or even six months ago and sometimes you'll sort of you'll shake your head and just go, oh no, what was I doing? But you also you know that the you in two years' time will look back on yourself today and go, oh bless. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a process. It is very much a journey. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what would you uh, say to somebody who is thinking of setting up a business today? Um. Well, coming back to what I said earlier, the first thing would be. Uh, really don't buy into the bullshit 
entrepreneurial stereotypes. Um, you'll actually hear a lot of people talk about, and I, they have this checklist for um, what you must do to work for yourself. And it will include working absolutely insane hours, it will include um, doing something that's going to lend itself to a high growth trajectory. Um, and a lot of the people who talk in this way are venture capitalists. And they kind of control a lot of the narrative around entrepreneurship. But basically, they are looking for companies that they can um, invest in and exit early, exit early with a handsome return. So there are a whole lot of other pathways that you can take to working for yourself that could, that could range from you know, being that entrepreneurial hero through to maybe actually holding on to your day job indefinitely and maybe this is something that you do to pursue a, to, to pursue a passion or an interest or to just um, develop your skills. Yeah, build it on the side. Yep, yeah. yep. There, is, there is no template. Mm -hmm. um, probably the, the one thing that you can do uh, which will help a lot, well probably two things. Number one, talk to other people who've gone before you. So for me, as a writer, I talk to other people who run writing businesses because they can, uh, they've already gone through and made the mistakes, so they can tell you the things to look out for that are really, really specific to your trade. Um, and the other thing is to find, find a community because if you're working in a, um, a, a steady job, and you've kind of got a ready-made community around you. Um, and I didn't realise until I actually left um, my government job how much I'd miss those kind of incidental conversations. Yes. You'll still have your friends, but it's those um, little interactions that you have with people throughout the day that can actually make a huge difference to your, your overall experience, your, your, your well-being, um, your mood. And I say this as a you know off the charts introvert, you know, so <laughs> like even I need some people around me. Um, so for me, that's meant a couple of things. You know, I've gone to a, a bunch of the networking groups around town, and I think they definitely have their place and work really, really well for some people. So I'd say check those out, mm. but equally don't feel like that's the only way that you can. Um, that you can build a community around you. For me, I've also um, joined the Entry29 co-working space here at the Camera Innovation Network. And for me, I have got some, um, some work out of it, but it's far more just a place that I can go to that isn't my uh, office slash bedroom and isn't a cafe. So it's kind of about having a place where I feel like I can connect in and be a part of. Yeah, a, bit, a little bit of a, a, of a sort of a, an office style environment. Without the politics. Yes, yes, very much so. And so, uh, and, and, and I suppose another resort is if, you, if, you, if there isn't a community out there for you, you can also look at forming one yourself. Hmm. There's always an option as well. Yeah, so I've just done that uh, recently where uh, I started up a group for business writers in oh, Canada. Great. So copywriters, but also people who are doing technical writing annual reports. Mm. Um, because there's plenty of groups out there on LinkedIn, but there's nothing really that gets people, you know, away from their desk and out there actually interacting with other writers. Yeah. So I've just started that up as a bit of a, a bit of a full up thing. I'm not expecting to make money out of it, but it's going really well so far. Oh, that's good. Um, so. Given you've had all these learning experience and some of which you've talked about today, um, if you went back and started your business again, what would you do differently? Oh, gosh, that's a really good question. Uh, the cliched answer would be nothing because everything has been a learning experience. <laughs> um, I've had that a couple of times. <laughs> look, I think um, do, do more of what's working. So I've found that a lot of my business has come through one-on-one -on -one connections with people. Mm -hmm. uh, so to do more of that earlier um, and also uh, probably just to 
realize that I don't need to um, K myself. So I don't need to be a workaholic to actually succeed. And often when, uh, like the, the fact that I've started to outsource has meant that I've been, as in get other writers in to help me on projects, has meant that I've been able to say yes to more work. Mm -hmm. So I probably would have done that sooner. Yeah. Yeah, made it more the business aspect because obviously if you're just a hired gun you're not looking at that but yeah and yeah. that can be a really hard mental shift to get around because as a you know as a startup owner as a sole trader you very much identify with the business and that uh that has it's good side because there's all of that energy and that integrity that you bring to it but it can be really limiting um as well so thinking of yourself uh, almost a little bit impersonally mm. like a collection of resources some of which are in my brain and some of which are in other people's and so you can just swap it in and out according to what you feel like mm. okay and um, I guess uh, just a final question um, Given you've had all these experiences, you've given a lot of it back through your book, I think. Um, Life Without Lineage is a fantastic read, and, it, and it's particularly good for public servants who are looking at, at making the jump. Um, with all of that, um, if you went back to when you were 21, you were making those choices, and you knew what you knew today, do you think you would ever work for anybody else, or would you just have established your own business? I would definitely work for somebody else uh -huh. um, because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of training that you get when um, you know when you have a when you have a job um, and there's also a lot of growing up that you can do in a fairly fairly safe environment. Uh -huh. um, I think it's very much a personal thing. So I know some people, so I'm 38, going on 39. I started my business when I was about 33. I know a couple of people who are in their early 20s and who are starting up writing businesses. Um, and I think for me, having done a bunch of other stuff before I come to writing means that I have all of these different angles that I can look at a writing project from. So I would say I would say definitely having a breadth of experience is important. Yeah. And you and you're also learning on somebody else's, you know, wallet rather than learning yeah. on your own wallet. Yeah. So I mean there there are definitely other ways that you can do that, like travelling overseas or doing doing some volunteering. You know, I I think you probably need to have a decent idea of what you want out of life to really make a go of running your own business mm -hmm. because there can be a, a few knocks um, and there, there's also those periods that pretty much every business owner I know go through where you know things slow down and you have that oh my goodness why am I doing this uh, it'd be easier if I just had a job elsewhere and if you have that sense of purpose um, clarified, then you've got something to go back to. Yep. So for me, it was realising that um, autonomy and freedom are really, really important to me and probably more important than, than the money. Um, I guess the other thing I'd say too is that you don't have to be an entrepreneur for life. No. There are some people I know who very much that's their vocation, mm -hmm. but I know plenty of other people who have done that for a while and then they move into paid work and maybe they come back out again. So for me personally, if you were to say, will you still be doing True North writing in 10 years time? I'd say, I don't know. Um, I know what it would look like if I, if I was. I'd probably have more people working for me um, and I'd definitely have my act together even more than I do now. Um, but equally, True North writing could be um, an amazing learning experience that could take me into something else. Mm. So I'm open to either. No, that's great. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Pleasure. Matt. Um, yeah, and I uh, wish you all the best with your business and, of course, with your book. Um, and, uh, yeah, all the best. Thank you.